Hi, I'm Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety and welcome to this Palm Springs International Film Society Q&A. Please join me in welcoming the people behind the scenes and in front of the camera of the film Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. I'd like to introduce writer-director Eliza Hittman and actors Sydney Flanagan and Talia Ryder. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Uh, it's such a wonderful movie. Um, I would just love to start at the beginning with Eliza. Um, what made you want to tell this story and how did you go about researching and, and writing the script? Uh, I, I started thinking about the film in 2012 um, and I you know, started thinking about the journey that people, women take all over the world when they live in restricted areas, restricted countries and it started really with a few newspaper articles. One was something in New York Magazine about women sleeping on the benches of New York City when they come in from other states to get abortions. And there was something very powerful about that image that these women couldn't afford hotels, that the cost of care was beyond them um, and spending the night on a public bench somewhere in the city. And I thought, you know, why haven't I seen that story before. Uh, I did a lot of field work, a lot of research like a documentary filmmaker would. I went into different Planned Parenthoods, I toured facilities, I talked to providers, to doctors, to social workers. And then I sort of in my mind came up with the structure of the film and I took the bus from rural Pennsylvania to New York City like the character does and just wrote from my own, you know, firsthand experiences. And for the actors, um, Sydney, it's really difficult for me to believe that this is your acting debut. Um, and from what I understand, you you sort of resisted the idea of playing Autumn? Um, yeah, I'd say that, you know, like when I first was like just approached in general about acting in a film um i was skeptical more so of like my own capabilities um i just didn't it just seemed like a bizarre idea to me i was like oh well, i've never done this before why would i do it um but you know it, it was one of those things where you know after reading the script and and talking to eliza and meeting eliza and you know kind of like easing my way into the idea of of acting and being a part of this film, you know, like after some thought, I thought like, you know, this would be a great opportunity to like challenge myself. And um, yeah, then I, it was just, it kind of became a matter of like, why not do this? And Eliza, I, I know that you knew Sydney before making this film, but how did you know she could pull this off? Hmm. Um, I really didn't know Sydney. Uh, I, I think like, you know, because I did all of this research, I had a lot of like information in my head and doctors perspectives and social worker perspectives. But because this journey is something that people take and then, you know, don't want to speak about, they do it, you know, anonymously. And um, because of patient confidentiality, I couldn't really connect with a human being who had been forced to travel over a hundred miles to an abortion clinic. I needed an image for this character. And because I had met Sydney years ago and because she was sort of popping up in my news feed on Facebook. And I just sort of made this connection between like her life on social media and this character, even though we obviously know that, you know, Sydney is not the character in this film. There was just something about her emotions and the way that she would perform songs on Facebook that I began to see as like the emotional experience of the character. Um, how did I know she could do it? Well, I didn't and I had to make a test and an audition and I brought her to New York and I, you know, I, I spent a day with her filming her in New York, doing scenes in real locations. And um, she, she was very confident as an actor, you know, even in those first auditions. Um, and so real and so vulnerable uh, and just had really great intuition. 
I don't, I don't really see my job as like somebody who takes like first time actors and teaching them to act. I really just see myself as somebody who likes to, to sort of discover talent and Sydney was talented from the beginning. Uh, Talia, you are a professional actor, you, you even coming into this film. Um, I imagine your experience was very different. I don't know if it was just an audition process or if you read the script and you know you were interested in the role from the start. Um, yeah, I went through like a pretty, I guess, standard audition process. I, haven't, I hadn't been auditioning for very long. I had recently finished Matilda, my run in Matilda, and I had really wanted to get into film and try that out and see how it went. And initially auditioning, I was only given like a short snippet of what the story was about. I knew that it was going to be a story about a girl trying to obtain an abortion in Pennsylvania and how difficult that was. And I had recently done my final project for a class I was doing on abortion in the United States. So I was immediately intrigued by the story. And after a couple rounds of callbacks, I eventually got to read the whole script and obviously fell in love with Eliza's way of telling the story and the simplicity of the characters and Skylar specifically. I thought she was a really cool, yet not over the top kind of hero of the story. Yeah. And I really wanted to be a part of it. And I didn't meet Sydney until my chemistry read, which was kind of like my final callback for the film. And it was really cool what Eliza did. She didn't just make us sit in like a boring casting office and read lines. She took us around the city and on the subway to do the scenes and stuff, which was really cool. And I got to talk to Sydney and to Eliza and it was like the coolest audition I had ever done. <laughs> I mean, the film does hinge so much on the relationship between these cousins who are also friends and they're comfortable with each other in a way that I think family is, you know, when you you, you don't have to constantly be talking to somebody or, you know, uh, entertaining them, so to speak. So I was actually curious about the chemistry read. Um, how did you sort of know that this was the right combination? Um, I don't know, Eliza, if you tested out other people or, you know, it's, it's, it's such a difficult thing to define chemistry. Yeah, I think in a way it was complicated because I was looking for two people who had very different energies. Like they, they, they couldn't feel too urban, like they had spent too much time in New York, in LA and um, Sydney and Talia both still very much feel like they're from someplace else. Yeah. Um, and and in the in the callback, it turned out that they were from the same place, and that ended up being a coincidence and a surprise and an immediate connection between the two of them when they met for the first time. I mean, did the, did the two of you feel it pretty instantaneously? And and you're also, I believe, this is this is both of your first time in front of the camera filming a, a movie. I mean, that's probably something you would bond over. Yeah, I definitely, I remember when we were doing chemistry reads and I think it was like two days that I was in New York just uh, reading with a lot of girls. And I just remember like, as soon as like, I think Tal was like one of the last people to walk in and instantly, like, I don't know what it was, but I was just kind of like, I'd like her. And I don't know why it was just like one of those things. And um, yeah, I just, I just like instantly, I, I almost felt like relieved when she walked in the room. Cause I just like, I just like knew we would get along for some reason. It was one of those types of things. Yeah, no, I was, I was obviously pretty nervous cause I was still auditioning and I walked in and I don't know, talking to Sydney and yeah, like she was just really chill and nice and definitely relieved my nerves a lot. So yeah, I instantly felt connected to her. So Talia, you have obviously experience on stage, but what was it like, you know, the, your, your first time making a major motion picture in front of the camera and Sydney for you who had no acting experience? I mean, how quickly did you sort of adjust to having a giant camera in your face? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, 
I'm no stranger to performing in front of other people because I've been performing as a musician for a very long time, like pretty much since I was a kid. And um, I don't know, like I, I've always been pretty like okay with, I don't know, like being openly vulnerable in front of other people. I've always been very much of an open book. <laughs> Like I will tell people very intimate things about myself, like in the first time we meet or something. Um, I've just never, I mean, like it is a little intimidating, like at first having like a camera on you like that, but um, it was mostly like after like the first few days and I got to know some more of the people on set, like that helped because I didn't feel as like, I don't know, it's like, it, it, once you have like a connection to some of the people you're working with, you don't feel as strange about it because they're no longer strange to you, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, kind of working on a movie is like its own world and has its own language of how things work and stuff, which I wasn't really used to and didn't know what all of those things meant. And by that, I mean, like, when you start filming, they say like, 24 apple take one mark and then they slap the thing and then they say speeding and rolling and I just remember on the first day they were saying all of this stuff and I just was so confused I didn't know what any of it meant but as time went on you start to understand the language and get into the groove of things and yeah I, it was just really cool to get to figure that all out it felt like my eyes were being opened I didn't realize how tedious and like exhausting of a process it was to make a movie and even to just film like a simple scene. I always think that there should be a class, you know, <laughs> like teaching you what that language is when you actually show up on a film set because it, it is kind of on the job training, I guess. How did you go about preparing to play these roles? Was there any special preparation or research you had to do or was it sort of all in the script? Um, personally, I, you know, I was just so terrified going into this whole thing. And, um, you know, I was so scared to try something new. And, um, you know, I, I remember just like being like, it all felt like it was just like hurtling towards me and it was all moving so fast. And I didn't even stop and think to research or to like prepare. I just kind of you know, a lot of it was just like very momentary and I went based on my own intuition and my own experiences. And like now when I look back, I do think that some of the things that I might have been doing in my head are like actually like, like I've learned there's like names for some of those techniques and I'm like, oh, you know, it, but I don't know. But that's the thing is I felt, I, I feel like you know, like any artistic process is so intangible and it's it's very difficult to find the words to describe what's going on in your head when those things are happening. But yeah, it's I think it's something I'm still kind of figuring out um, how to explain it at least. Well, you're, the character is figuring it out as the movie goes along. So it's kind of appropriate. Sure, yeah, I could say, I could say that. Talia, what about for you? Yeah, you know, with Matilda, which was the only other really big project I had worked on, we, there was no preparation. We had, we had like a two month rehearsal process. So on mm -hmm. the first day of rehearsals, we showed up and prior to that, we weren't given any of the script, any of the lines, anything. So everything, they basically just completely guided us through that process and there was no preparation we needed to do, we needed to do on our own. And I knew it was going to be a little bit different for film. And I knew that we were only going to have three days to work on the script together. So I really didn't know how to prepare for something like this. And I just tried to read the script a bunch of times over and over to make sure I really understood, Sky understood Skylar and could put myself in her shoes before I worked on it with Eliza and Sydney. And and in, in our very short three-day rehearsal process, that's when we kind of worked on the scenes and worked with each other and stuff. And surprisingly, I felt pretty good about going into it after three days. Eliza, you have such a great eye talent and, and such a great way with actors. 
Um, is there a secret to, <laughs> to drawing out these incredible performances? Is, is, uh, you know, they say sometimes a lot of it is just in the casting, but even that is a talent. Yeah, uh, I, I believe a lot of it is in the casting. Um, I think I look for a certain kind of performance and gravitate towards a, site, a certain kind of performance that, that's more interior. Like I like actors on screen where you can really feel them thinking and have, you know, things on their minds, you know, because a lot of like what I do in a way is documenting thought and this sort of quiet nonverbal narrative, I would say. Um, you know, it, it, there's no one way to work with actors. You know, you have to, you, you know, try, you know, you have to understand where they come from and who they are. And that's the job of the director to be, you know, be able to work with them. Um, like, I think, you know, I think, you know, that Talia and Sydney each brought very different energies to the screen. Like Sydney, I could tell, could look at a scene in a second and just memorize the dialogue and not just memorize it, but like internalize it. Like I could watch her look at a scene and just like ingest what it was and put it away. She never needed to like study lines and there was just something um very intriguing about watching her as a first-time actor sort of go through the process and there was always um you know a sincerity to what she was doing and it made it almost hard to cast other people around her because you could feel performances from other actors whereas Sydney you know, was so, was so genuine on screen. And I had to cast around how honest she was, if that yeah. makes sense. And even though Talia had dance background, um, she adjusted very well and her performance was equally as honest and sincere. Um, and, you know, that was really, you know, the, that was really key to the success of the film. Um, these two young people, you know, who are very earnest in figuring out all of the obstacles that are against them and taking this brave journey without being like overly precocious, you know, or yeah. um, teen movie-ish and just watching them navigate the hurdles together and how challenging it is. And there's a simplicity to it, you know, and it wouldn't have worked um, with anyone else. Uh, I mean it as the highest compliment when I say that this film feels so realistic and organic. It made me wonder if there was much improvising because um, it does feel so natural. And, and again, I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> um, was there any improvising on set? No, there's one scene in the bakery at the end of the film where after the second part of her second uh, her second trimester abortion, she, you know, they go and they have like one last little bite together. And I let them improvise in that moment about the kinds of pastries they were eating um, because I wanted it to feel like their daily life, their regular life, their kind of sense of girlhood was sort of returning in this moment. And I gave them I gave them freedom there, I would say, um, to improvise. But I think it adds a lot of pressure on people to say like improvise. And I think that there's a whole like strategy and technique to improvisation that not every actor, you know, is, is, is suited for. I would love to know for each of you, um, you're you're making an independent film, you probably don't have a very large budget and you're shooting a lot of times outdoors um, in different locations, uh, but what did end up being the most challenging part of playing these roles or the most challenging scene? And Eliza, for you, I would love to know as a, as a director and a writer, you know, if there was a specific scene that stood out to you as, as the one that, you know, you maybe had to, you know, spend more time with to get right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, um, like a logistical standpoint 
you know, yeah, Talia, it looked so emotional. Logistically, yeah. logistically, Talia was under 18. So she was a minor at the time. She was 16. Um, it made it very challenging given the limitation of the number of days that we had and the hours that we could work with her to, um, you know, complete the photography for the film. Um, that was like a big, a big challenge. And in the beginning, so, you know, Sydney was 20 when we shot, so we didn't have any issues with her. But in the beginning, when we were casting, we were looking at people who were under 18 and it would have been absolutely impossible to make the movie on an independent budget. Can I ask what your shooting schedule was? How many days you had? Uh, 26, 27. Wow. Mm -hmm. But a lot of moves, obviously, from location to location, public spaces, you know, buses, trains, planes, and automobiles, a lot of, a lot of challenges in that respect. And for the actors, what was your biggest challenge? Mm, I can never think of a, like, specific, like, what was the biggest challenge? I just feel... Like, I feel for me, the only way I can put it, like, at least, like, just, like, first thing that comes to mind is, like, I don't know, the, the role itself and the experience itself was the challenge for me. It was brand new. It was so scary. I was a very, very, very anxious person. And um, putting myself in an environment that is so chaotic and intense and, like, it's it's a lot and it is you know it's a lot of work and you get tired and sometimes irritated and like it's it's so rewarding but it is it's a lot so yeah i'd say just just doing it is a challenge yeah honestly like i was kind of thinking the same thing i i remember Specifically, there was like one day that we were shooting at Port Authority and we could only shoot there from, I don't know, Eliza can tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like it was like 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, those hours and I, I, I was a junior in high school at the time and I, I had like a big test coming up and we were shooting some pretty big scenes that day in Port Authority and I was, I don't know, I just remember those late nights feeling really overwhelming and, and hard to like, I don't know, I, I really always want to feel like I'm doing everything perfectly and I, I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't feeling like that and I was getting upset with myself, but it's just part of the process and part of the experience that you have to, I don't know, allow yourself to like even have rough days even when you're filming a movie and stuff absolutely and Sydney I know that there was a little reluctance coming into the world of acting um but you've received so much acclaim for this role you won best actress from uh, just to name a couple the Boston Society of Film Critics New York Film Critics Society are you going to continue acting yeah I'm in Chicago right now working on a project <laughs> so I'd say I'm continuing um yeah you know I I mean, all of everything going on right now, I mean, it's amazing. It's it's really great. And especially because like, you know, a lot of my skepticism and reluctance to enter acting in the first place. I mean, it's not that I looked at acting and I was like, God, that looks awful. It was more that, you know, I, it's like you, you feel people have, you know, their doubts about themselves and, you know, their insecurities. And you look at something so big like that and it scares the crap out of you. And you think like, you know, it was more so me thinking like, there's no way I can do that. That's, I'm not capable of that. And it, you know, the whole thing of like accepting this role was like me, like kind of like trying to prove to myself that I can do more and that I, you know, am capable of more. And Eliza, what has it been like for you? This this film has received such a wonderful response, not just from critics, but I imagine this is a, a movie where people have very strong feelings about it personally, and they probably want to talk to you. 
you know, about their own stories. Um, I, I know obviously we're in this pandemic, so it's not like people can, you know, run up to, uh, to tell you what their movie meant, but have you been experiencing that? Yeah, um, I think all of us feel like our inboxes on Instagram are flooded with messages that, you know, it's hard to write everybody back a personal individualized message. Um, we all kind of work together over the last six months doing educational outreach with Planned Parenthood and talking about the film and talking about sex education and abortion access and, you know, women's rights and all of that has been a really meaningful component to the film um, and promoting the film and also, you know, dedicating ourselves to an issue that's all like very important to each of us. Absolutely, it's such a beautiful movie. I wanna remind everyone that it's available everywhere now. Well, thank you so much for joining us today um, and thank you all for watching at home. Thank you. Thank you.